In this video, we will be discussing creating and editing materials. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 1702 creating and editing materials.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. While the predefined materials are a great way to start applying materials, at some point you will need to create new materials and edit the existing ones. The materials and configurations you can create are limited only by the amount of time you can commit to creating them. So for an example here, let's go ahead and look at our floor, as well as one of the walls here in the kitchen. Let's go ahead and edit the way that it's defined in the drawing. Let's go to the Render tab, Materials panel, Material Browser. And in the Material Browser, let's go ahead and right-click on the material applied to the floor and go to the Edit tool. This opens up the Materials Editor palette. Let's go ahead and turn Auto Hide off, and let's look at some of the settings you can change here. Notice that you can change the finish from high gloss to satin or matte. You can also change the bumps in the actual object. So if I go ahead and change this here, you'll notice that the bumps will automatically appear in the file. You can even change the relief pattern if you want to as well. If you want to add a tint to a material, you can sure as heck do so by simply clicking in the tint color, and let's just say for the heck of it, let's make it a blue color. Notice how it's automatically changing that to a blue color, which is pretty cool, but obviously we're not going to apply that to our flooring and wall. So let's go ahead and turn off tint. So you can go in and change the appearance of some default materials. Let's go ahead and add in our own material with one of the materials that are predefined. Let's say for this counter here, I want to add my own blue glass type material. We'll go to the materials browser, and in the lower left part of the materials browser, we can create a new material in the DWG file. Notice the categories of materials that you can define as well as new generic material to create your own. So let's start with the solid glass option. It looks like nothing happened, but because we already have the material editor open, we can just fly into it and now give it a description and name. So let's call this one blue glass counter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I edit the actual description as well as add some keywords in here because this will make it easy to find the material if I want to search for it. So I'll add materials, interior, glass, blue, and let's go ahead and add counter in there as well. Let's go ahead and select the appearance option. And now I'll turn auto hide off so we can see this. Before I do anything, I want to apply this to that object there. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. One way to add this is to drag it onto that solid and it's automatically added in there. In the materials editor palette, let's go ahead and change this to a bluish color. Notice how it automatically does that. And we can then go ahead and change any of the default settings that we want to based on the material that we feel this is going to be. So let's say we want to change the reflectance to somewhere around 40. How is the refraction going to be? Maybe it's an air type refraction or water or alcohol or quartz. Do you want any roughness to the material? You can also add that in as well. Will there be a relief pattern? If so, is it rippled, wavy, etc.? So I'll go ahead and add a wavy one and notice how it's adding that effect automatically to the material. And of course, as you can see, it's a see-through because it's a glass type material. Again, really cool, very easy, and you're done. Let's go ahead and add in some materials for our actual stove. We want these materials to be the actual image of the stove top and the stove front. Notice how we already happen to have one in our drawing of the refrigerator. So this is actually really fantastic functionality. You can take a picture of a real world object and then save it as a JPEG or standard image file format and then bring it into AutoCAD. So let's go to our material browser and we'll click on the drop down here and let's add in a new generic material. In the material editor, let's call this one stove front. And again, we'll give it the description and name for keywords that will help us search for this material later on. Go to the Appearance tab, and in here, you can define a color, but in this case, all we want to do is click here. This will give us the ability to select an image. In the Dataset folder, you can search and navigate for the stove-front.jpg file. Notice the standard file formats available that you can use. We'll click Open, and before we go any further, let's go ahead and apply this to our front of our stove. What I can do to do so is I could select the face by holding the control key down or I can hold the control key down right now, 
click stove front and drag this onto the face by just using the control key. That's pretty cool. It just applies it to the face that you select. Let's turn auto hide off for the materials editor. And what I need to do is simply change the scale. We can change any of the reflectivities and so on, but in this case, I want to change the actual scale of it. We'll leave the default settings. To do so, you select this drop down here and go to the edit image, which opens up the texture editor palette. We'll turn auto hide off on this one. And what's great about this is that you can actually see this change automatically. Now, if you already know the size of your image and what it's supposed to be, you can toggle off the lock and simply change the scale. So I need to change this to two foot nine. So I'll type in two foot and you must type in nine inch mark. It doesn't recognize the subunits like it does with default AutoCAD. That will automatically apply that width factor. And then for the height factor, I want to apply three foot. Enter. And as you can see, really cool, it's already placed properly and scaled across that object. Note, you can also adjust the X and Y as you need to by simply clicking up here. And now, as you can see, I'm adjusting that properly. Very cool stuff. Let me close the editor there and we'll close this one as well. And let's go into here and we'll do that same exact generic material for the stove top. So we'll go into the information tab and we'll type in stove top. And for the keywords, we'll just type in top here. Back in the appearance tab, let's go ahead and click on the image and let's add in the stove top image. We'll click open. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and apply that material. Control key down on the keyboard, hover over the object, and now it's applied to just that face. Again, really cool stuff. So in here, we need to go to the image editor. Let's click that, go to edit image. This opens up the image in the texture editor. We'll turn auto height off. And again, we'll do the same exact thing. Make sure you unlock the height and width ratio. And for the sample size width, we want three feet, press enter. And then for the height, we want two feet, press enter. And as you can see, we've pretty much got it there. If you want to do a little bit in the negative X value here, you could do so there. And there's our stovetop. If I close these all out, I now have those images added in there. Really, really, really amazing stuff. Let's say I may want to use this glass material in another file. To do so, you can add it to your current palette. To open your tool palettes, go to the View tab, Palettes panel, and toggle on Tool Palettes. You can also press Control 3. I want to create a new palette. We'll call it My Materials. When in doubt, right click. We'll go to New Palette. We'll call this one My Materials. And then in the Material Browser, so let's go ahead and open that up. We'll go to the Render tab, Materials Panel, Material Browser. I want to add in that blue glass material. When in doubt, right click. And you can select the Add to Active Tool Palette. And you now have that material available to you to add to any other drawings that you might need the material for. This concludes this video discussing creating and editing materials.